I mean, the thing that most fascinates me about this whole subject is is, is something that the problem is it quickly gets very technical. But but there there's a there's some there's there's an area of mathematics which is known as representation theory, and from for, or one, one way of thinking it is thinking about it is in terms of what are what physicists will often call symmetries. So so for instance, one of the basic facts about the laws of nature is that they're um, they're they're symmetric. The laws of nature are the same at you know, if you move in, if you move in any direction or you move in time back and forth, the laws of physics don't change. If you rotate things around in three dimensions, the laws of physics don't change. And so, so there are these so-called symmetries, and um, and the, these these symmetries have very important um, physical implications. So, for instance, the fact that the laws of physics don't change as if you change your if you move in time has a physical implication that, that there's this thing called energy and energy is conserved. And same thing, the, and the, the fact that laws of physics don't change if you move back and forth in different directions in space implies that there's a, um, something called momentum and momentum is conserved and doesn't change in, as you move, as you evolve in time. And so, so these very, very fundamental facts about physics are kind of deeply grounded in the, the symmetries of, of nature. And so, to a mathematician, this 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 question is um, is a question about what we call about groups and representations of these groups. So if you go into any uh, math department and look at what they're doing, you'll see that you know that a lot of, lot of people in different kinds of mathematics are studying d different structures, which are all so-called groups, and they're often studying what are called representations of these groups. So even people studying num number theory, kind of abstract things about about prime numbers or something. They're also studying groups and certain representations of these groups. So there's kind of a, to the extent that mathematics has a kind of a unifying theme and a unifying principle which shows up in different areas of mathematics, it's about this re this, these representations and representation theory. And the, the thing that mo most strike, one of the most things that most strikes me about physics and most fascinates me about it is that if you look at quantum mechanics, quantum mechanics initially looks like a very odd structure. It doesn't it's not something we we have any kind of intuitive understanding of. It doesn't look like, um, you know, like like what the, the way we're used to thinking about physics based on our everyday experience. But if you look at the mathematical structure and the basic structures of quantum mechanics, they're exactly the structures that show up in this theory in this theory of representations. So there's a kind of a deep relation between math and physics, which is which, which is surrounding this whole notion of symmetries and representations of symmetries. So, so, that, so that's one thing that's always fascinated me, and, and, that, and my own research, my own interest is, is in kind of developing, t taking a lot that's been learned in mathematics. There's a lot that's been learned in mathematics over the years about how to think about representations and how to construct them and how to work with them. Some of it has made its way into physics and been used in physics and, and, and was been used in physics since the early days of quantum mechanics. And um, so, for instance, one, one of the great kind of, to the extent there's a, uh, a kind of hero of this book I wrote about this. It's a mathematician called Hermann Weyl, who was a special, who kind of was one of the first people to understand how quantum mechanics worked and to understand the relation to representations. But 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 I, anyway, I think there, there's still a lot to be learned in, in that way. And, and very specifically, the the so-called standard model has this group of symmetries, which is called a gauge symmetry, and it's an infinite-dimensional group. And the standard kind of physics conjecture or understanding of, of the representations of this group is that there sh is that, that should not be an interesting question. That there should only be a trivial representation of this group. But anyway, my, my conjecture is that there's, there's actually a much more interesting question there. And, uh, and pursuing that, you can, pursuing this question of how do you deal with the, with the, the gauge symmetry of this theory in, in terms of uh, using ideas from representation theory that are um, that are more well known in mathematics that haven't been used in physics before that you can actually get somewhere. So that's, that's that may be a bit too technical, but that's about as good as I can do with with this.